Alright, this is Lady and the Tramp 2, Scamp's Adventure. Um, when, the first time I heard about this film was obviously the video cassette out of, um, of The Little Mermaid 2. They showed you, um, on, like, after the credits show, and you, uh, alright, well, before the movie would start, they did say, like, stay tuned after the feature to see a sneak preview of the movie. I mean, and, and, um, that's how I first heard about it. So, my mom got it on DVD, and, on, and honestly, this is, um, much like Aladdin and the King of Thieves, is this is one of the Disney sequels that actually comes close to being as good as the original. Oh, I, I'm not kidding. This has, like, this is a really damn good sequel. Oh, and, uh, well, let's take, just take a look at the story. It's a little bit out, it takes place a little bit after the first film's events. Oh, it scams the little boy, voiced by, uh, Scott Wolf. yeah, Scott Wolf. Of which is a very weird choice because it does not sound like a little kid at all. Oh, because he's a puppy and crap, and, uh, nah, whatever. Uh, but it's fine. I uh, but we'll get to that, oh, we'll get to that later. Or something. But, uh, but let's keep on going. He basically feels like he doesn't belong here because he, uh, he broke some rules and now he has to stay outside. He has to stay outside on a chain. And then his, his father, or voice, but his father, Tramp, voiced by Jeff Bennett, or, uh, basically, or he wants him to understand that he's just trying to protect him from any trouble and stuff. But Scamp takes it too far and then, or not, uh, after the big argument between him and his father, or it's saying, and like that, maybe I don't want to be in this family. Or yeah, I'd like it or not, you are a part of this family. And until you start acting like it, he, I well, you would basically know what he does and what he says. He could just get used to uh, being outside every night. So he goes inside of the house and his, oh, uh, and um, his mother, or uh, basically talks to him at first, uh, as well, lady voiced by Jody Benson, uh, which is actually a cute choice, I will admit. But um. Uh, but uh, he sees the but Scamp sees the junkyard dogs. One of them is a dog named Angel, voiced by Alyssa Milano from um from Commando. Oh, and um he and oh no, he basically escapes from um uh, the the chain, and runs off to the junkyard on uh, dogs after singing a really good song actually. Oh yeah, and, um, what you call it? What he does meet up with the junkyard dogs, oh, it's with, oh no. Their leader, which is a Rottweiler named, a named Buster, voiced by, oh yeah, by, by uh, by Chaz, a uh, Palament, uh, Palmentary, whatever you call it, um, uh, the, the guy from um from who played his uh, uh, uh Smokey from uh Stuart Little, oh and um uh, the guy on on uh what do you call it the guy from um the a uh, Bronx Tale, I'm trying to remember it's that, it's that same guy. Oh yeah, he does the voice of the Rottweiler named Buster, the leader of the Junkyard Dogs. And there are the are other dogs in the movie. I mean, like this, um, on like uh, the cheap dog named Mooch, voiced by Patrick from SpongeBob himself. Of uh, Bill Fagger, bait. Like and, on uh, yeah. oh Mickey Rooney was in this movie. I didn't know. I didn't know that. On uh, he plays as the uh, old dog, uh, named well named Sparky, a uh, oh yeah. Like an I mean, sorry, an Irish wolfhound. On who basically um, or tells a story about oh not the tramp later on in the film. Um, that's really cool. I didn't know all that he does the voice. Uh, but anyway, I, um, uh, and the other there is um an a I mean, an Afghanistan hound on a root be voiced by uh, on Casper Moriarty, or you know the um. Uh, the lady from Casper, the one that wants the treasure and stuff. It's that's it's that lady. She's also from Kindergarten Cop with Schwarzenegger. It's not a tumor. And the la and the last. Oh my god! Oh my god! A Boston Terror named Francis, voiced by I kid you not, Balky from Perfect Strangers and on uh, Mr. Toomey from um on um, um, you know the Langoliers. Oh, it's the guy that goes, scaring the little, scaring the little girl. I can't really do it because my brother's sleeping on next, oh yeah, well, my brother's next door or sleeping. But, uh, but I didn't know. This is so cool that I'm finding out that, uh, that Balky from Perfect Strangers is in this movie along with, uh, uh Mickey Rooney. Oh yeah, now, Scam has two sisters voiced by, uh, 
No, no, three sisters. Two of them voiced by Cal Sousey, and the other voiced by uh, uh, Jimmy Neutron herself, of Debbie De or Debbie Derryberry. Oh, well, kind of a weird name, but whatever. So, uh, we already know this. We already know the drill. Oh, uh, Scamp basically learns a lesson about not joining a group of of dogs and stuff. Over there, basically, it's kind of basically a role reversal of the first film. So. Yeah, they do a really good job with the story here, actually. It may seem a little bit of the same, but it's done very well. I like how the, uh... Um, I do like the care. I do like all the characters. Uh, Scamp is basically your typical rebel dog... A char rebel character that just wants to be a fun character and stuff. And, and basically, he does Like, he... Uh, he just doesn't know what he knows. He thinks he knows what he wants to do, but then later on, he doesn't know what to do. It's that kind of trope. Um, the songs are pretty good. I like them. Um, like um, a world without fences is a very nice, always good tune. Um, down into the junkyard is probably my favorite out of all of them, actually. Um, um, the voice acting is really good. I like Jody Benson as the lady. I love Jeff Bennett as um as Tramp. He does a really great job as the character. Right, um, the actors who played as, um, oh, what do you call it, Jock and on Rusty, they do a really good job as well. Oh, uh, we already know oh, who they play by, who they're played by. Um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, so yeah, the rest of the voice acting is really good. I'm just trying to realize what I'm trying to say. Um, the only thing that's really just, that's just as good as the first film is definitely the animation. I mean, oh my god. This is definitely one of those Disney sequels, which I will be talking about as well later on. This is one of them that should have been released in theaters. Oh, it's much like Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Like, oh, like the animation itself is really beautiful to look at. So, um... So, um, I guess the climax is kind of phoned in, actually, now I think of it, but, nah, it's, it's, whatever. Oh, it's fine. But, uh, that's the rest of the rest, so, honestly, the rest of the film, it's a really good sequel. Oh, do I recommend it? Absolutely. If you are a big fan of the original Lady in the Trap, I think this will do you fine. Oh, uh, like, I think this is a good sequel for anyone who wants to, or who is basically a big fan of the original. I don't see this, I don't see the first one as a masterpiece, but it's still incredibly enjoyable. And same thing here, which came close to being as good. So, um, if you have seen Lady and the Tramp 2, what did you say? Just comment below, follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and Stardust. Don't forget to click like on the video. Oh, and on, uh, don't forget to subscribe and share the video. I'm the Bus Journey Critic, and I will see you in the next video.